And welcome back to another podcast with Mr. Hagen. And on this podcast, we're going to continue to uh, build our aggregate expenditure model, our aggregate expenditure model. And I just want to highlight a couple of assumptions before we move on. Uh, one assumption that I want to highlight here is that there's going to be no government spending or taxation. And then the second one is that we are in a closed economy. Well, the other assumptions we'll deal with later, but those two assumptions we're going to use specifically on this podcast. And then uh, we also talked on the previous podcast about the marginal proposal propensity to consume, the change in consumption in response to a change in income. And we're now going to put that together with uh, what is what is called the multiplier effect, the multiplier effect. So what the multiplier effect says is, well, let's just define mathematically what it is, and then, then we'll, we'll apply it here in a second. So the multiplier is calculated by taking 1 divided by 1 minus the MPC and this there's a math proof to show that this is show that this is true we're not going to go through that we're just going to accept this formula uh, 1 divided by 1 minus MPC and of course the MPC is the marginal propensity to consume which is right here and now we're also bringing back our formula our big formula for gross domestic product which is y equals c plus i plus g plus n plus nx but then of course we said that there's going to be no government spending so that's going to disappear and we said there's going to be no uh, exports or imports so net exports is going to disappear so what we end up with is this what we end up with is because of government spending being zero because of being a closed economy because net exports are equal to zero that means these two go away as i just said so we're going to end up with this y equals c plus i y equals c plus i uh and then what we're going to do is we want to say well well what happens in an economy if for some reason we get an increase in consumption let's say consumption goes up for some reason why might consumption go up consumption might go up because maybe there was a rally in the stock market and as a result of that rally in the stock market uh, people begin to spend more money so so let's say that uh, because of a rally in the stock market consumption goes up by let's say uh, 100 million dollars so, so people around the country, because of the stock market rally, they, be, they feel wealthier and they go out and they start buying uh, whatever. They should go out and start buying stuff. What we want to ask is what's going to happen to GDP as a result of this increase in spending? And that's where this multiplier thing is going to come, come into play. So if consumption goes up by $100, then that by definition means that total spending in society went up consumption plus investment investment spending whatever it is didn't change consumption did change it went up by a hundred dollars and that means that gross domestic product is going to have to go up by a hundred dollars gross domestic product is going to have to increase by a hundred dollars I mean that's what the definition that's what the definition is that's what our formula is telling us if we get an increase in uh, spending of a hundred dollars that spending is going to become somebody else's income so GDP will go up by a hundred dollars now we have to bring this marginal propensity to consume into the into the discussion because if the marginal propensity to consume is change in C over the change in Y, and let's say as we did on the on the previous uh, podcast, let's say that the marginal propensity to consume is is 0.75. Let's say it's 0.75. So that means that every time your income goes up by a dollar, you spend 75 cents of it. Or let's say for society as a whole, if the GDP goes up by a dollar, uh, consumption will go up by 75 cents. Okay, we talked about that on the previous podcast. That's your marginal propensity to consume. Now, if the marginal propensity to consume is indeed 0.75, let's say we've gone out, we've measured it, and that's what it is, then when GDP goes up by $100, 
that that income that people now have, that extra hundred one hundred million dollars of income uh, that that people have, they're going to spend some of that income. How much of that income are they going to spend? They're going to spend seventy five percent of it. They're going to spend seventy five cents for every dollar increase in GDP. So in this case, if we get an increase of one hundred million dollars in income, that's going to increase consumption by seventy five million. People are going to go out and these people who have this new income, okay, so stock market rallied, that caused people to spend more. When people spend more, that becomes somebody else's income. And then that person who now has more income, they spend 75% of it going out and buying stuff. So consumption goes up by another 75 million. But, but when they go out and they consume stuff, that of course becomes somebody else's income. That becomes somebody else's income. So income, or GDP goes up by another 75 million. Well, of course, 75 million uh, is now new income for somebody, and and that means people that have this extra 75 million dollars in income, they are going to go spend part of that. How much of that are they going to spend? They're going to spend 75 percent of it. So how much are they going to spend? Well, you would do the the 75 million. That's this times 0.75 because uh, they're going to spend 75% of that 75 million. So that's going to generate a new round of spending of 56.25 million. So now this increased income of 75 million these guys are now going to go spend some of that income. They're going to spend $56.25 million of that income. And of course, when they do that, that's going to mean new income for somebody else. When they go out and they spend that money, that income is going to, that spending, that consumption is going to generate income for somebody else. So incomes will go up by another $56.25 million. Okay. But we're not done because now that's another $56.25 million of income. So now you got to multiply that by 0.75. 75% of that $56 million is going to get spent. And that's going to increase consumption by it's uh, by another $42.19 million. And so this just goes on and on because that becomes new income and that's this is just going to go on and on and on and on. And that is what is called the multiplier effect. The additional increase, the original increase in spending of $100, that original increase, or $100 million we said, that original increase of $100 million of consumption caused GDP to go up by $100 million. But then, of course, that was created income for somebody, and they went out and spent it. And when they spent it, that they spent $75 million of it, and that caused incomes to go up by another $75 million. And, of course, that was spent, part of that was spent, which became someone else's income, which caused income to go up by another $56 million. And then that was somebody else's income, and that caused another increase in, uh, of $42 million. And, and on and on and on we go. This just this just goes on and on. So if I've done my math right, this would be uh, so far gross domestic product has gone up by $273 million in response to this original $100 million increase in spending. But of course, we're not done. I, I just stopped. This goes on and on and on and on. Consumption generates new income, which causes more consumption, which increases income, which causes more consumption, which increases income. On and on and on it goes. Where does it stop? Okay, now we bring this multiplier formula back into the discussion. And we say the change in initial spending, let's write that out. This is, this is, this stands for initial spending. The change in initial spending, the initial spending that starts this whole thing going, that was the $100 million, okay? That's what gets things rolling, that change in initial spending. And then you multiply that by the multiplier effect. And the multiplier effect is just this formula that will tell you when this finally comes to an end, okay? And so the multiplier effect is one 
divided by 1 minus MPC. That is the multiplier. So what's my formula going to be here? Well, it's going to be the change in the gross domestic product is equal to the multiplier effect, which is 1 divided by 1 minus 0.75 in our example, because that was the marginal propensity to consume, all times the change in initial spending, which was the $100 million. And then this is going to be uh, change in y equals this multiplier effect is 1 divided by 1 minus 0.75. And so that's going to be, if you run that through the calculator, it's going to be 0.4 times 100 million. And so the change in y is going to be 400 million. Okay, so let's say again what that means. What that means is that if you get an initial increase in spending, if you get an initial increase in spending of a hundred million dollars, the stock market goes up, people increase spending by a hundred million, the change in initial spending is an increase in one hundred million dollars times the multiplier effect will ultimately cause GDP to go up by four hundred million dollars. Isn't that pretty cool? So a small increase in income can cause a much larger increase in gross domestic product through the multiplier effect. You see, the increase in the stock market caused an increase in spending of a hundred million, which generated income when people went out and spent it, that generated income for somebody, which caused them to spend more, which generated more income, caused them to spend more, which generated more income. When does this stop? When does this come to an end? It comes to an end when the GDP has increased by $400 million. That is called the multiplier effect in the aggregate expenditure model. Okay, I'm going to stop there because that's, that's a lot of stuff. We will uh, take all of this, try to make more sense of this on a future video and, and apply all of this uh, all these concepts uh, to a graph and start getting this mop, putting this model together. All right, this has been Mr. Hagen on another podcast. Thanks for joining me, and we'll see you on the next podcast.